And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. It is the Weighing In Podcast, and we are back. We're back to doing things because I'm back home. Thank God I'm not sitting somewhere in some damn house that I don't even know who owns it. But I am back to talk about all the fights that are going to be taking place. We do have the PFL coming up this weekend on Friday, and then we have a supremely interesting and fantastic matchup between Corey Sanhagen and Umar Nurmagomedov. That's going to be the main event for the UFC this week, and that is a fantastic fight. Josh, we got a lot to talk about, but I'm saying right now the PFL comparatively, if it wasn't for the women, it wouldn't be that interesting of a card, but the women do make it interesting. (laughs) John... (laughs) Not only do we have a lot to talk about, we talked a lot on some news clips that are going to be dropping this week. So make sure you guys tune in on a daily basis on shows that should be dropping either daily or maybe one in the morning, one in the evening. So make sure you hit that bell, that subscribe button there also too, because they'll be dropping. And when that bell goes off, you know that we dropped something new that day. So make sure you guys hit that bell, hit the thumbs up and the notifications so you guys can see when we drop this week. A lot of news, a lot of stuff going on from the PFL, the Bilal and the releasing of, you know, fighters and and you know Dana not happy with the hundred thousand dollar payout and all this other stuff. So we did wasn't all happy those about much. Yeah. Wasn't happy about much. We did all those very, news clips for you guys, and hopefully you guys enjoy those. So make sure you hit that bell and that thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Yeah, John. Outside of the female fights, man, there's not really much going on, man. I'm not. I'm a big Tim Johnson fan, but I'm just being honest. It's not one of those. Like, well, actually, let, pack, this whole tournament thing fell apart. It it really has this, this global season for the PFL as far as. The heavyweights, and you know, the, and this is the, the we, how many times do we say it? Heavyweights are a problem because there's just not that big of a pool of top flight heavyweights out there. Even the UFC is limited in what they have, and the PFL is going to be limited in what they have. You know, Tim Johnson, two months ago, he was driving a truck. You know, he's, I love Tim Johnson, he's a great guy, but he was basically kind of thinking about MMA being in his rearview mirror. He gets called, he comes in. He puts in a great fight and gets a big knockout, gets the six points, and gets himself put into the PFL playoffs, which I love that entire story. It's fantastic. But then he gets matched up with a guy that is Dennis Goldsoff, and Goldsoff's good. Goldsoff is one of those heavyweights you can look at. He's got really good stand-up. He's got a phenomenal jab. He uses his jab well. He's the kind of fighter that normally gives Tim problems based upon his length and his stand-up, and he's got good defensive wrestling. So this is not an easy matchup for Tim Johnson. You know, who was the one that, who was the Russian he beat in Russia? The Russian that That Tim Tim Johnson beat in Russia. He ended up beating Malk, Malk, not Malkinen. Uh, No, 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 no. no. He was Uh, the former Bellator champion, left, went away, came back, became, he was getting some wins. Gosh. Anyways, look. Bottom line is, what you said, Moldovsky? No, no. He beat. Remember the one he lost. He lost to Moldovsky. No, but remember he used to be the Bellator champion. He went away for a long time. Minikov. Oh, Minikov. Yes. So he ended up. He shows up for that fight. We, I had counted him out, not thinking that he was going to stand a chance. Ends up having a great performance. What did he fight Minikov in Russia? No, Uh, no. He fought Fedor uh, in Russia. That was uh, Soma. Yeah, he fought Salma. That's right. Sorry, my bad. Let me just scratch the whole thing and re-race it. Let's just go back. Erase, erase, erase. Erase, erase. erase you erase, know, but look, Tim Johnson's one of those guys, though, too, that you don't think he's going to do well. He doesn't perform well, and then all of a sudden he shows up and fights a great fight and gets a great win. So I look at Goldsoft. Goldsoft's someone that can be knocked out. Tim Johnson can knock him out. Tim Johnson can also wrestle him and put him on the bottom. And we've seen with Goldsoft, yeah, well, he's not good what, off of his back. No, that's exactly what Tim Johnson needs to do is utilize his wrestling and, and look his wrestling he's a bear when it, when he gets his hands clasped around you but he's got to get through that distance and that range of Goldsoft to get there and which means he's he's taking a chance he's putting himself in danger to get to that but he has to do it to try to get the win because you know look he's looking from being a truck driver to a million dollar payday Yep, I think I might take that chance and put myself in danger. Oh, absolutely. And I think, I honestly believe he's got a good chance of winning this fight. You look at his fight, Goldsoft's fight with uh, Hennen Fajera. 
it was the story of two fights, right? When they were back and forth, whatever, one was on the ground, couldn't escape. The other one was on the ground, couldn't escape. Golsov's not good off of his back. He's no, not good he's not, off, off the bottom. How many heavyweights are, though? No, but Tim Johnson, he can put him there. And so when, yeah. I'm, when I take a look at this fight, I think there's options and there's ways for Tim Johnson to win this fight. And the more that you threaten the takedowns, the more that Golsov will be hesitant to throw big shots. And so Tim's got an opportunity to either knock him out and catch him on the entry, or he's got that opportunity to put him on the bottom and do work and do damage. Look, Matt, I believe Tim Johnson fought Matt Mitrione, correct? They had the clash of heads. Weren't they the two yeah. that had the clash of heads? No, that was, uh, well, I mean, had Tyrell Fortune. He yeah. had a clash of heads with him. Man, I'm all off with Tim Johnson, man. Well, I'll tell you, man, you you are because you're killing me on this one. But Tim, but but positions. Tim is somebody like I said is that people look at him, they look at his body style, they look at the way he kind of you know enters the cage, and all of a sudden he's getting a win over someone he's not supposed to beat. And this is that this is that fairy tale stale, stale story, John. That he comes in, and all of a sudden he now he's in the semifinals, one win away from getting to the finals, and I would not be surprised if he gets this win. He's absolutely capable of it. Tim Johnson is that guy that people do not give enough credit to mm -hmm. at all times. He's got power in his hands. He's knocked plenty of people out. Like you're saying, like he's got wins against guys like, you know, Matt Mitrione, like you said. He knocked, he was the first one to put a put a mark on Tyrell Fortune, who is a world, you know, uh, a world games wrestler and stuff who was really getting his stand up together. And Tim Johnson went in there and starched him with a beautiful left hook he's gone out there and he's fought guys like fedor that didn't go his way but you know that's normal if you're going to get into a stand-up fight with him but he is a guy who can take people down or he can use his stand-up to hurt them on the feet and then get into the grappling situations and if he does that he's successful in his last fight against danilo uh, marquez an interesting fight if you're looking at it because man he had marquez out with a punch at the same time that Marquez kicked him in the nuts and put Tim Johnson in deep trouble as far as writhing on the ground. And I thought he had, you know, I thought the, you know, what happened with it was a little bit unfair towards Tim Johnson because he had a guy that he had hurt legally. He got hurt illegally. And really they called it all. Oh, I'll give you a warning when he could have ended the fight. Then he did come back, you know, a minute later and finished the fight. So, you know, that's how he got that six points. But Tim Johnson is a gamer. I will never count Tim Johnson out of a fight. And he's physically a really big guy. So is Goldsoft. He's a though. bear. Both he's of the bear. two of them are big, big men. <clears throat> so I'm. I, this is going to be a fun fight. It kind of comes down to if Goldsoft can keep this on the feet and if Tim Johnson can get this at least threatened to get it on the ground enough to sure. make Goldsoft a little hesitant on the feet and getting taken down. But I think a lot of the hype right now, John is about the co-main event. Go oh, ahead, I'll let no, you do the no intro. Doubt. There is no doubt. Like, but I honestly believe, look, it's the women that are the the highlight of this card. You know, and this is where I, I say we've got heavyweights with the men, but the flyweights for the women are the fights that you're looking at. You're going, those are great matchups. They're great fights. Are they great matchups, John? I actually think so. And this is why. Look at Are they fair matchups, John? Were they decided fairly? Cannot say that completely. I'm not sure that, that I can actually uh, say that I think it was. I do think there's always some. Whenever you have a tournament and you have the matchmakers determining who's going to fight each other, there's always something in there. It's always, I, I love when the fighters just, you have, there's a bracket and the bracket flows. But I, I look at, you know, Dakota Tacheva is the, you know, the up and coming star in the PFL. And look, I'm going to tell you, and you know, she can fight. Mm -hmm. yeah. I She reminds me of a female version of Carlos Condit because she got a mean streak in her. She does. You can see it. You know, she's a nice, you know, you know, beautiful young lady, but she got a mean streak in her. When she hurts people, she finishes them. She goes after them. She's got that mean streak just like Carlos Condit did, and I really like that about her. She's facing off against Jenna Bishop, and in this fight, I'm going to say right now, on the feet, Dakota has got a huge advantage, in my opinion. But on the ground, Jenna Bishop's got the huge advantage. So this is really about where does this fight take place? Does it take place on the feet? Dakota Decheva, she's going to win this fight. If this fight hits the ground and there's some time, look out because Jenna Bishop is a shark on the ground 
She is a savage who will absolutely go after Dakota, and Dakota better be on her A game as far as defending against submissions because Jenna Bishop is the real deal down there. Yeah, I would agree with you 100%. It really comes down to like a UFC one type thing where yeah. whatever your style works the really most does. is where you've got to keep it if you want to get this win. Dakota Dicheva, though, to me is, I think, I believe the better athlete. She's got the long reach and I will. Well, the younger, faster athlete. Yes. Yeah, but also to the body style, like I've said, it works yes. for this sport. That long yeah. reach, the long limbs. She works really well with the long jab. She works really well with that push kick up the middle. She does a great job of keeping her distance. She she knows how long her legs are and how to keep you at bay with her kicks. And then when you get past that, then she hits you with a long jab or a long combination. She's yeah. very good at, at the range fighting. She understands what she needs to do to keep that space and that distance. Jenna Bishop is going to take some shots coming in. Can well, she handle the power? No doubt That's about one. it. That's it. That's Can she question. get past the speed? Because the speed is going to make it seem like there's 50 punches at one time. Can she get past the, you know, the two punch, three punch combination, even though it feels like a bunch of people from rush hour kicking me and punching me at the same time. That's what it was going to feel like. Which one do you hit me? Yeah. Which one of you hit me? So she, that's where she, Jenna Bishop's going to find herself. But once this fight hits the ground, it's going to be reversed. Dakota is going to be like, okay, which arm are you attacking? Which one of you is touching my ankle, my ankle, which one's touching my waist, which one's touching my arm and my neck. Like she's going to be attacking from everywhere. So yeah. Dakota has got to be very careful and cautious. Once this fight hits the ground, as well as trying to work her way back up to the, to her feet. So there's going to be some back and forth. I'm going to lean towards Dakota because the speed and the reach and the range is going to get, the, I think, get her past uh, Jenna Bishop. I just, John, I know, I know I sound like a negative Nancy. I don't want to sound like a negative Nancy. Then but, don't, but go but ahead. The PFL, <laughs> the PFL needs to resolve this issue with how their brackets are set up because this really looks like favoritism. I got it. Yeah. It's that's it. Well, and I don't want to, I don't want to, I'm not putting anybody on the spot. I don't want to, I just want to simply say, I want, I have high expectations for the PFL. I want them to succeed. I want fighters to have another, another option and a place to go outside of the UFC and Bellator. I want all of this. We understand like if there's less promotions, there's less fighters that we get to watch and, and see them achieve their goals. I just don't like, cause this looks bad. It just does. She had a way easier road getting to the semifinals and potentially to the finals than someone like a Liz Carmouche and a, uh, Santos. Oh, yeah. And it's just not like the, who now the yeah. Who had the hardest road? Liz Carmouche. Liz Carmouche. Come on. She, she went against Juliana Velasquez first. Then she had Kana Juan Navi and now she has Talia Santos. Absolutely. Way more difficult fights than what Dakota had. But well, the reason why I'm bringing up this whole thing is because you have one that was in the PFL and one that came from Bellator as a champion. And now let me give you all the harder fights to get you to the, the top. And let me give the one that's just coming up, which I believe she's extremely marketable. I'm not denying oh, that. She, she is. is. And she's good. And she's good. Exactly. Like she, she hasn't, she, it's not like she was skating by and getting through these fights. No, she's finishing and dominating. Oh, yeah. She's no, dominating. Fights. She's dominating. But when I look at where the PFL is going with this, like, I, I, there needs to be something that shows that you're not skewing it one way or the other. That's all. That's it. I hope that they, That's I want all. them That's to all. continue to have success. That's it. All right. I'm going to move on. Let's go next fight. <laughs> are Sorry, you sure John. you're moving on? I'm, I'm are you sure? On. Are you sure it's over? Cause I just want to make no, sure know, that you're, know. you're comfortable with, you know, I want the best for, I want the best to fight the best and we may get that, but I feel like the, uh, well, let's, let's, and let's be honest. Kamush. The, and this is the way I, I, this is what I've been saying. And this is the way I look at it. Like I said, Dakota is a damn good fighter. There's no doubt about it. She is going to get even better as time goes on. She's going to be a star, you know, can she be beat now? Sure. She's young and she's going to make mistakes. And the problem for her is the level of competition, not so much. We'll say in this fight, because Jenna is more one dimensional than you know what she's going to be facing be it liz carmouche or talia santos who ends up in the pfl finals against her she is finally going to be facing somebody that is a well-rounded fighter that can grapple well that can strike well that is experienced and has way more experience than her in a variety of situations and fights and overcoming adversity that she hasn't had to deal with so you look and you go there's the one element that putting her in that position where she is, you know, a just 
more dominant fighter, you may not have been helping her once she gets to her next step. Possibly. She but all, what we've said before is that confidence is very key in this sport and getting those first round, second round finishes, you know, throughout that tournament, building your confidence, walking in there like as if you're unstoppable can sometimes but, work to your advantage as well. Yeah, but let, let's be honest. Let, I'm going to take you as an example. All right. When you were walking through opponents young in your career, and then you just had a guy, you know, that was in the gym that people were talking about. You said, who is this guy? Uh, and you you first rolled with a guy named BJ Penn. <laughs> what happened? Yeah, it, it was. You were, it you, were, was a, you were a young, cocky, confident guy. Yeah. And what happened? I felt like I felt like he should have been charging me for a clinic. That's, <laughs> that's what I felt like. <laughs> I should have. I should, <laughs> You should have been paying for private. Yeah, I felt like, yeah, he was giving me a private lesson. And, okay. And, yeah, and and, it was for and free. Is, and, and But this happens, and it happens to everyone somewhere along the way. You all of a sudden go with someone that you go, holy shit. Yeah. I have never felt anybody like this. I've never been hit by anyone like this. I've never had anyone that has moved like this. I've never been, I've never been in this position where I'm unable to touch someone like this. It happens. And when it happens in that big fight, all that confidence goes away real fast. Yeah, that's true. That's so. true. Uh, next fight. All right, we got Oleg Popoff going up against Linton Vassell. This is a, now a switch up. Popoff was supposed to be facing his teammate in Valentin Moldowski, but Moldowski was injured, had to pull out. And so they bring in the guy that actually beat Moldowski in that last fight, Linton Vassell. This is a, this is a, a questionable fight as far as... Look at Linton Vassell is a a monster when you look at him. as far as he's a Greek god. He's built like you, you know. It's like you're not supposed to be that big, that strong, and look that way, but he is. And on the ground, he is absolutely a very good fighter in the top position. He crushes people. Now the real question is, they've taken away one of his best weapons, which is his elbows in the. On the ground, he uses them very well. So now he's got to go to punches. Popoff has lived off of his wrestling. He's getting better all the time. He's eighteen and one. He's a dynamite wrestler. I I do believe that he can take Linton Vassell down. But if there's one thing Linton is good, he is very good off of his back with his sweeps. He's got a beautiful elevator sweep. He does a lot of different types of attacks from underneath to sweep you over, and he swept over a lot of really good fighters. So I have a feeling that he'd be able to do it with Popoff. So this is going to be an interesting matchup. Well, we saw the fight with uh, Linton Vassell before his last fight. Who did he fight? He fight Goldsoft, I believe, right? He just looked horrible. He looked well, horrible. He looked he wasn't feeling well. And then was dead. Yeah. And so and they were believing that people were talking about how he was sick and he just never recovered. It was on antibiotics. And, and yep. we were, everyone was kind of like, I don't know. It kind of looked like you just gave up. Everyone, everyone questioned it. Then they brought him back in uh, the last round and he gets a win. You yep. know, and he gets that win. And now he's here. In the semifinals, yeah. with an opportunity to get to the finals. Yeah. And his last fight, he looked phenomenal against Moldovsky. To me, Moldovsky was the guy to beat. He was the one that I felt like was going to win the whole thing. His wrestling, his ability with the fast hands. He was a hybrid heavyweight, someone yep. who puts pace on you. Somebody who can really get after you and change the dynamic of the fight. And make, you, make heavyweights fight at a pace that they don't want to fight at. He looked like he was just lost out there in the last fight against Linton Vassell. And so when um, Linton's get, stepping up now... Look for Lenton to. I'm looking to see him be the same guy he was in his last fight against Moldovsky. And I agree with you, John. If he does get taken down by Popoff, but he's got a great elevator sleep. He's good off the bottom. He's good at getting on top. And when he gets on yep. top, he's hard to get off of you because he is so long and rangy. When you go to sweep, he bases really well. Yep. And when he's able to post his hand, he's able to like put the leg out. He's able to keep heavy hips. Man, and he's physically strong. You look at him; he looks like a Greek god, like something you would chisel stone out of. And that's exactly what he does, what he looks like. And so I look at Popoff's got to make sure he stays on top. I don't know if he can. And how much effort does Linton Vassell make him work to get the takedowns? That's the other key. Lynn can't just fall down and be like, "Okay, yeah, I gave him the takedown easy." No, he's got to make him work for those takedowns. Threaten the Kimura, threaten the guillotine, threaten things that will make him reconsider shooting and wrestling on you to make you more tired, pull back out and have to re-enter. So then he has to waste energy trying to get those takedowns. And if he does get the takedown, threatening the submission, threaten the Kimura, look for the, look for the elevator sweep, look for the sweep with the Kimura. All of those things, Lynn Vassell has got to be active from the bottom because he can't settle on bottom and just give away the rounds. 
No. It is only three rounds. Right. There's not a five round fight. Okay, we're not into the finals. It's a three round fight. You've got to win two of those rounds. You've got to go out there and set the precedent that you're not just going to lay on the back and just let him ink away minutes and seconds and win the round. I like that fight. It's crazy, though, how we basically the semifinals is made up by a bunch of replacements. Yeah, well, this yeah. is what happens when you know, like, tournament wise, I don't care what it is. It is tough to go from one camp to the next camp yeah. to the next camp and continue on. It's it wears fighters out and it's very few people can make it through, you know, that type of situation without having injuries and things like that. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense. But one of the best fights on the card, and it's the start of the main card, is Talia Santos taking on Liz Carmouche. This is a phenomenal flyweight matchup. Talia Santos fought for the UFC championship. A lot of people thought that she beat uh, Shevchenko when she uh, fought her. It was a close fight. Uh, Liz Carmouche has fought Shevchenko twice. She's got one win, one loss against her. Liz Carmouche was the one that started off with Ronda Rousey at UFC 157, and Liz Carmouche went to Bellator and just reignited her career and has had a hell of a run. I want to say she's on a, either a seven or an eight-fight win streak right now uh, and has just you know been fantastic. She was losing to Kana Watanabe in her last fight, pulls out a beautiful arm bar right near the end of the third round to get the win. That's what has made Liz Carmouche so special in this run is she's always dangerous. She's always that person that, you know what, you can't make a mistake against her. So Santos, probably the favorite going into this, I would say. But, man, don't count Liz Carmouche out. She is physically strong, and that causes Santos problems. Was she losing that fight against Watanabe, you think? I, on the scorecards, I found out oh, that wow. she was losing that. Yeah, so I, you know, I didn't think so personally. Mm. But on the scorecards, I know that two of the judges had her down. Yeah, I think where Liz is going to have some hard times in this is that she's going to have a hard time getting in to close the distance. She's not the fastest of fighters as she's getting older. Closing that distance, she's also the shorter fighter. She also doesn't have the same reach that Santos has. So having to get in and close the distance to get this fight to the ground. On the ground, there's no doubt that Liz is the better fighter. Um, Santos is good. She's no slouch off the ground either. No. She yep. just does a lot better work from the feet. And she's got power in her hands. So Liz got to be careful she don't get caught coming in. But Liz's got to be crafty. She's got also, she also, too, with Liz, she's got power. She seems to forget that. I don't understand what it is. Why not be found out in their first fight? And she yep. just seems to forget that, like, hey, all I got to do is make you miss, and I can make you pay with my power. She just chooses not to do that. She chooses to wrestle and try to grind you out and get you down. And But when she does decide to sit down on her punches and, and land shots, she, she earns people's respect right away. Look, she's physically one of the strongest women fighters there is, no matter what weight class. She is physically a very strong human being. I haven't grappled with her yet, so I can't say that. I can't agree with that. But you know what? If I ever do <laughs> grapple with her, I'm going to make sure I smash her just yeah, to prove you, you go wrong. ahead. Yeah. But you, I know mean, what happens, you know what happens to cocky old men when they take on well, people John, who are still fighting? You 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 just assume my gender. I might just assume that I'm gonna no. be I'm, I may be a female for that grappling match with Liz. So we're so uh, then I don't feel so bad if I lose. To her. I can't I can't wait to see what you're wearing. <laughs> thong to thong thong thong. Thong to thong thong. Uh, uh, I, I think that's gonna be a great fight. That's a great fight to open up the card. That is. There's the potential of it being a scrap when it comes to the first couple of takedowns. You know, um, Liz is gonna have to fight her way out of some some. Uh, some shots in that first, yep. I think, probably first two and a half, three minutes. But as this fight goes on, man, both of these fighters will be there in round three. You know, um, I think with the Jenna Bishop and the Cheva fight, I think once one starts taking away, starts leading the way, I think it's going to be a runaway for the rest of the fight. If Bishop's able to get her down early, control the whole first round, I think Dakota will not be the same fighter in rounds two and round three. If the Sheva is able to keep this fight on the feet and make Bishop take some shots in the first round, I don't think Bishop's going to be the same fighter in round two and round three. So I do agree with you, though. The ladies will be still on the night because the heavyweights are, you know, I don't see if, I don't really know if the heavyweights will go past the first round, to be honest. Both yeah. fights. So yeah, good. It be. might be a short night for us. Very good. Very good. <laughs> Lucky us. You will, right. I will say that the, the, the main event prelim fight being Tyrell Fortune against Sergey Bilostini. If you're going to look at a, at a good, both guys up and coming heavyweights, both guys with a lot of steam, a lot of skill, Sergey Bilostini, strong as hell, hits like a truck, 
tough as hell. Tyrell Fortune can wrestle his ass off, but very seldom seems to want to do that. He's been doing it more lately, and he's been getting wins. And so you got to say he's getting smarter as far as his fight IQ, looking uh, looking good like that. So that's a good fight. Yeah, John. Look, I we can't say that uh, he's been waking like he's been making his way up and, and up and coming. He's not up and coming anymore. He's been here. No, he just needs to there. find a way to keep True. winning fights. He decides to not wrestle, and then he start then he loses. Then he decides to wrestle, and then he wins. And he's got some knockouts on his record, but his his whole bread and butter should be wrestling. The level in which he can wrestle, and once he gets these fights to the ground, he can control and dominate the top position. He just chooses not to. He's like every other wrestler that fell in love with their power. All of a sudden, now I'm Mike Tyson. I can knock everyone out. I'm so Levander easier. Holyfield. I'm Lennox Lewis. No, you're so not. Much easier. You're not. Yeah, it, it's so much easier also <laughs> to lose those fights. That's true. So, That's you happened. Know, but Sergey Bellastini, though, good fighter. Very, uh, they have very comparable records. Bellastini being twelve and three, Tyrell Fortune being fourteen and two. Definitely a good fight for the for the uh, main event for the prelims. So tune in a little early to catch that main event for the prelims. You'll have some, you have a good opportunity to watch uh, two heavyweights sling it, sling it, sling and leather. My farm needs the earth, the air, and the water. I get my energy going on Element Electrolyte Drink Mix clean good tasting energy that feeds me like i feed my plants and animals and after a long day on the tractor when it's time to shoot the podcast i drink elements so that i can stay energized and stay salty let's get it on Well, John, let's go ahead and uh, jump right into our UFC fights, which I'm excited for because my boy is fighting on the main event. And Your we- boy is fighting in the main event, and that is a phenomenal main event. The, this is you, We talk about quality of fights, and you look and you go, you can't get any better than Corey Sanhagen against Umar Namagomedov. I mean, Umar is 17-0. and 0. Obviously, Corey's had a couple of losses. He's 17-4, and 4, but Corey Sanhagen is a monster of a fighter his stand-up is slick he is now his ground game has caught up you know he was a little bit behind before but his ground game has caught up he is smart he's got a outstanding fight iq and umar namagomedov is is one that you know like this is a guy that you know has worked his way into being as good as he is not you know no one no one handed it to him he wanted to learn he asks questions. He has worked his ass off to get there. And at this point, a guy that started off basically as a Taekwondo guy has turned into a beautiful stand-up fighter using a lot of those spinning attacks that he learned from Taekwondo into a guy that can wrestle his ass off and now has submissions on the ground. He is the full package. Yeah, John, let's not forget that you know most people don't go calling out Corey Sanhagen. No. And um- Umar's been calling him out since he got into the top 15 rankings. He's like, you know what? I want that fight. I want that fight. My concern only in, in them speaking as a friend being like, okay, there's other fights that you could have taken along the way. that were way easier fights. Why all of a sudden go to Corey Sanhagen? Corey Sanhagen's uh, grappling is drastically underestimated. Like people underestimate his grappling wow. left and right. Even Keto George over here shaking his head like a bobblehead <laughs> on the hood of my car. He's just doing this. Like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Because he knows Corey's good off Corey's body style, long and tall, lanky, 5'11, 135 pounds. That's yeah. insane. That's insane. Um, you know, those they they co- they pose problems, whether it's guillotines, whether it's uh triangles, whether it's arm bars, whatever it is, it gives them the leverage to go ahead and crank on those submissions. Yeah, no doubt about it. Umar's got to be cautious on the entry on the takedowns because I'm looking, I'm thinking to myself, his game plan is to basically get the takedowns, control the top position, maybe work for his own submissions because I, I, Umar's grappling is phenomenal. And we, we've we had Patchy Mix on, and I've talked to Patchy Mix several times, and he said Umar is for sure, hands down, probably the best fighter in the UFC at 135. He's like, I'm not in the UFC, but that's why I say he's the best fighter in the UFC. But – they're, they've grappled That's together. He's worked out with him. Yes, he's grappled with him. He trained with him. He knows how good he is. He knows how good yep. his wrestling is. He knows how good his grappling game is. And he doesn't feel that. I, I feel I get the, I get the opinion that he doesn't feel that Corey has good enough grappling to submit Umar. And I, I believe Umar is somebody that he understands what the game plan is. He's following the plan. 
<laughs> and the plan, John, is to dominate the top position, smother him, control all the positioning that he can from the top position. And if it starts to get a little hairy from the top and submission wise, back out, let him up a little bit and re-enter. Or as he starts to get up a little bit, take him down again before he gets all the way back up to his feet. Makes sense. You know, but you look and you go, you know, Corey, Corey is tall for the, uh, the weight class, but he doesn't have that big, long reach. He's one of those guys, you know, because the reach goes fingertip to fingertip. So when you got narrow back it goes, and shoulders. It goes what, John? You just mumbled that whole thing. Fingertip to fingertip. <laughs> fingertip goes, to hands out stretch. <laughs> but when you, when you don't have real wide shoulders, mm -hmm. you know, and a big back, it kind of, you know, brings it down. So you got, you know, Umar is what, 5'8", if that. Five, yeah, seven, around. Five, eight. And he's got, I believe, a 69-inch reach. Well, I think Corey's at 70. So uh. reach-wise... It's close. Obviously, there is the height difference, but I think based upon the spinning attacks that Umar does throw and the way he throws them, it's going to hold Corey back a little bit from what he's comfortable in doing, but it is going to come down to, and I do believe this fight's going to end up hitting the ground, and it's going to be who is on, the, on top and who remains in that position and does the damage in the fight. You're going to have a lot of stand-up action, but you're going to have a lot of ground action too. It's going to happen with this and it's how much damage can each fighter put in those situations where they have the advantage. That's going to be the, the you know the question on who's going to win this fight. Yeah, but John, there's other things too that you got to be concerned about. I'm concerned about as a as a true fan to Umar. First, is, off, first off, you can't sit here and start to give that you are a true fan. No, you are a homeboy. <laughs> okay, who wants John? I know I know you like Corey. I but do. There's like Corey. no doubt who you are siding with I, in this fight. Yeah, there's no doubt who I'm siding with. No, okay, fight. thank you very but much. But that's why I'm raising my concerns. I'm concerned about <laughs> You're always height. concerned when one of your guys is fighting. I know, I know. And I have to bring these up because I do get concerned about, I get concerned about the knees from Corey Sanhagen on the entry for the takedowns. Right. We saw totally what it's done to we'll several what fighters. Frankie Edgar. Yep, it's happened to several guys that have fought Corey Sanhagen. He doesn't have to jump that high. No, he doesn't. You know, And where I think maybe we're going to see some success out of Umar and getting the takedowns, don't look for him to shoot. To the body locker to the double leg look for him to shoot low level ankle picks look for him to to shoot low and try to grab and if it doesn't happen it doesn't happen he'll come back up to the top and stand a little bit and look for him also to use long rangey side kicks you know snap kicks to the head like his uh brother uh usman yeah look for that style of kick he uses a beautiful wheel kick though yeah his wheel kick is set up beautifully very hard to 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 see it as it you know before it's it's coming at you he sets it up well and uh that spinning wheel kick that he does man it's like ooh, yeah. you know he's dangerous with it but those are things that i think if you're a fan you guys are at home watching umar he's got to be cautious of the knee that comes up the middle i agree with you he's got to be careful on how he's reaching he's and lunging he cannot allow himself to get carried away with throwing the side kick and then coming back in with the straight left or the straight right and leaving himself out of position because Corey Sanhagen will slip and make him pay. Now on the Corey side, go ahead, John. What, and one of the things that I think is an advantage for Corey in this, Corey's been five rounds. Umar has. Yeah, this is true. This is true. But I want I want to remind you that that Umar goes five rounds all the time. That's like I'm not saying he doesn't. Eats but... it for breakfast. Eats it for breakfast. <laughs> eats Just it. nom 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 nom. nom, nom. nom He's gonna eat it up. Look, five, I'm not concerned about conditioning or cardio. I'm not, oh. no, I, look at, but when you are doing it for the first time, yeah, no matter who you are, it enters your head. It's a mental thing. Absolutely, yeah. it is. Yeah. Absolutely, is. Um, with Corey, I don't want to make this all about Umar. With Corey Sanhagen, the craftiness, the ability to make adjustments on the fly, the just, have you ever watched, have you ever saw, you follow him on YouTube or on Instagram? Oh, yeah. I do. This yeah. guy's, his breakdown, fight breakdowns are Fantastic. freaking insane. Yeah. His technique breakdowns he are insane. Understands. Yeah. He is someone who is a student of the game. When people talk about being a student of the game, they're not students of the game. This dude is the student of the game. This dude knows what's up. He breaks it down so smoothly, so fluidly, and he sees everything that's happening. And you can go through his own fights and see like, and he talks about it. I knew this was going to happen. I knew this was going to happen. But I love when he does it for other fight, other fighters, what they're doing. He is smooth. He's crafty. And I got to give this, I got to leave him with this because I got to give him some love. I had two guys that trained at AKA that went over to, uh, to, um, 
to Trevor Whitman's. I believe that's where he's at, right? That's he's where he's at Trevor. now. Yeah, that's where he was at too when they went there. To, he went to go train. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, they were both 55 pounders. And they went there and trained a little bit with this guy. And they're like, yeah, I was like sparring with this guy, da 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 da. And he's like this small little skinny twig guy. Like he's a, they're like, you know, not big. This tall. skinny, skinny ginger haired guy. Yeah, he they thought, was just they thought everyone, skinny. everyone thought he was talking about keto George. Yeah. It's like, he goes, yeah, he's like, this is tall, skinny guy, you know, whatever. This dude jacked me up. And then a couple months later, they see him in the UFC and he's getting some wins. And they see him a couple months later and he's now he's in the top five rankings. Then he's like, oh, yeah, we found out that guy was Corey Sanhagen. I feel better. And I was like, <laughs> oh, these guys were 55 pounders and then went and dropped to 45 because they realized, man, there's no way I'm going to have success at 55. This 35 pounder is just piecing me up. So it's just a funny story because that's how good he is. You got to give him some love, got to give him some credit. And I had to do that because he, to me, when I was, when I, when Umar was calling him out, he was probably one of the scarier fights on this bracket for me. Look, John, uh, Peter Yan, Marlon Vera, Henry Cejudo, Devis Figueredo, Song Yidong, Jose Aldo, Rob Font. These fighters, right, are all underneath Umar. You're going to give call outs. I would have liked to have seen maybe the Marlon Vera fight. Maybe the Peter Yawn fight. Both those fights I could have seen maybe being a little bit easier than the Corey Sanhagen fight. And only based on the fact that Chito fights a lot, but he doesn't fight smart. But Mar uh, Peter Yawn just doesn't fight as much anymore now that he's not the champ. He's Fair been enough. very inactive. I don't know if it's an injury thing. I don't know if he just needs a break, a mental reset, whatever it is. Then you got Corey. Marab, I think, would have been a good fight for him too because I don't know if he would have been able to take him down. The pace, but the two of them with cardio machines, good stuff. Song Yudong would have been a, I think, a, a good fight for him tough, as well. A fight, a fun fight, but tough fight. Devis and Figueroa's the the wild horse in there. Well, so Devis fast, is, so explosive. We'll we'll see what happens because we're going to talk about that fight soon. Yes, we will. <laughs> Bet US, America's favorite sportsbook and casino, live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer: a 125 percent sign up bonus on your first three deposits, plus 10 percent gambler's insurance. Get started today. Bet US, where the game begins. Next fight, John. All right, we got Shara Magomedov taking on Mikhail Olacichuk. <laughs> I cannot say Polish names. I had a, a Polish guy in my drush in my <laughs> class and stuff. God dang. I'm telling you right now, Polish names are possibly the hardest names there are. But Michael Olaszczuk is an outstanding stand-up fighter. Fun to watch. Tough dude. Taking on the bullet in Shara Magomedov. Did you see the clip? Not the clip, but the... I don't know, it wasn't an interview. It was a quote by Mikhail Olachenov, Olachek, whatever it is. He said basically that he could see himself losing this fight, but if he did, he pretty much is going to retire. Really? Didn't make any yeah, sense to me. He commented it on an Instagram post. Yeah. I, really? I, I, I don't understand why. You're, you're fighting someone who the UFC thinks is very high. You get a win over him. Cool. If you get a lose to him, if you lose to him, there's not much... Like you can still make a run back. I mean, I don't know. You're and he's nineteen and eight. I guess I understand. Like you don't have the best of record. Maybe the, you don't want to be considered a stepping stone anymore. And you want to move on. That might be it. But I also I think we saw in um, Shara's fight, his last fight, he's got a lot of holes holes in his game, John. A lot. He's got a lot. I mean, I'm talking about him like how we were talking about Patty Pimlet after the the Gordon fight. Like, wow, there's so many ways to beat this guy. So I, I, I don't, I'm not ready to Olich, uh, Chuck, whatever. I'm not ready to write him off. I, well, I, think, yeah, I, I think he's got a good chance of winning this fight. You can go back to Shara's last fight against uh, Antonio Tricoli. You know, most people, the odds on that thing was crazy as far as, mm -hmm. you know, the bullet was, I mean, a heavy favorite. I can't remember the exact amount, but super heavy favorite. Mm -hmm. And you look and you go, hey, he had him in trouble in that fight, and it went all the way into the third round, halfway through the third round, before Shara was able to put him away. Like you said, look, he's got he's got certain things. He's got he can he can hit, but so can Olachuk. Same, you know, just as well. And you look and you go, yeah. You know, but he's got issues as far as he overextends on shots. He makes a lot of mistakes. He he gives openings, and all it takes is one fighter to have the fight IQ to figure him out quickly, 
and to shut down what he does and make him pay for those mistakes. Yeah. And he's going to have that first loss on his record. And he's not in that position right now in my mind that, you know, people are talking about, oh, you know, he, he can be fighting for the champion. He's got a ways to go. No, he's got a long ways to go. And I actually like the guy because I'm, I'm liking the flavor that he's bringing to that division because that division sucks, you know, at the 185-pound division. So I don't know. I don't think it sucks right now. I think you, it's actually no. really interesting. It, it, there is a little interesting. But I also, too, like guys like I would like to see him fight someone like uh, Carl Brahalo. That would yeah. be a fun fight. That would watch be a him good fight, fight someone like but- Brahalo. I don't think that's a fight he's ready for. No, he's not ready for that fight. Okay, you know? so then, then it's not a good fight for him. <coughs> but possibly a Chris Curtis fight. Chris Curtis would be a good fight with him. I agree. Chris just yeah. had a fight announced. Yeah, too. he did. You know, um, against Kevin. Yeah. Kevin Ooh. Holland, who just beat uh, the guy that <laughs> Michael. Yep. Excuse me. <clears throat> yeah, so you've got, you know, you've got Anthony Hernandez in there. you got Michelle Pahead in there. Uh, Bahalo. Michelle Pahe has been on fire there. He has been. He's looking great. Yeah, it's surprised what happens when you don't cut 80 pounds to, <clears throat> to this fight. This is true. This is but true. I'm not, I'm not fully sold on Shara. I think that he's got a lot of holes, but I do like what he's bringing to the division. Yeah. I mean, when you get to the lower ends, I'm excited about guys like um, Pahe, uh, Michelle Pahe fighting at 185. Bahalo is definitely interesting. Chamayev, we don't know when we're going to see him again. Delice, he's proven that he's got some holes in his game. But guys like um, Hermanson, Costa, Vittori, Cannoneer. Imovov. But Imovov, no, those guys that I just mentioned, they've been there for so long that now the new breed is starting to come in. Yeah. You know, you've got Imovov is there. You've got, um, who was the other one? Brendan Allen, he's in there now. And um, those are the guys. Those are the guys that we're looking and going, okay. Those are the ones that we're going to look to see going to be in that top four or five. You understand? Shara yeah. <clears throat> is not quite ready for any of those guys just yet. Outside of maybe uh, yeah. Chris Curtis, outside of maybe, you know, maybe in Bahalo or um, Michelle Pahea. Those would yeah. be fun fights. I just don't know where it'll sit. This going to be interesting fun. to see what happens in this one. But the fight before that is two guys that you were just talking about. Marlon Vera is taking on Devinson Figueredo. And Figueredo has looked fantastic since moving up to 135. He's got two great wins. Um, his last fight against Cody Garbrandt got the rear naked choke for the win. I mean, he's just looked really good. And he's been more active because the weight cut's not killing him. He's feeling good. That's a great thing. And Cheeto Vera coming off of a loss in his championship title fight with Sean O'Malley. So kind of both looking at in a position where Marlon's looking to get it back, and Devinson is just looking to continue to let that train roll. Um, this is a this is a as you said, sometimes Marlon doesn't fight real smart. If he doesn't against Devinson, he could find himself in trouble. Well, Devinson Figueroa was able to get a little bit of wrestling and grappling in, I guess, this week with Habib's camp uh, leading up to this fight. And I think that if there's one way that Marlon Vera loses this fight, it's in the wrestling and the grappling department. You know, Marlon Vera is good in jiu-jitsu, but he's also someone yeah. that just settles in on the bottom and just tries to land elbows from there or punches from there. And, uh, you know, and to, we'll potentially doesn't do a to lot get to up. get back to his feet. Doesn't do a lot with sweeps or anything. And so, yeah, I agree yeah. with you. And you know, Devin's he keeps himself safe. Keeps yeah. himself safe. He does. But I think Figueredo is someone that will grind. He will land. He will take chances. He's proven that he will take chances, like heavy chances in terms of heavy ground and pound. Try to make him, he will make mistakes because he relies on his ability to get back into the fight, whether it's his wrestling or his striking. He's a well rounded fighter. Figueredo is someone that can fight, take this fight anywhere. Cheeto's yeah. got to keep this fight on the feet. What also concerns me with Cheeto is that we've seen it before. We saw it with the Rob Font thing, we saw it with the other fighters. He waits for the moment to get the knockout. He waits and waits and waits and waits. <laughs> well, that really moment, saw it in the Rob Font. Yeah, we may not see that. He may never get that moment because. Figueredo is going to be in and out so fast. He's going to be the way faster fighter and speed kills. So if he can get in on the distance, close that distance, get the takedown, control the top position. And then if they do get back to the feet, he can do it again. Stay on the outside until Chito gets frustrated, get the easy takedown, control the top position, rinse, wash, repeat. Same thing over and over again. Well, it's, you got to look and it's Rob Font is one of the common opponents that they've had where the fight that, that Chito Vera had with Rob, Rob actually, if you remember, volume-wise, he was lighting Cheeto up with a ton of volume. 
and then Cheeto would end up getting the big shot, maybe knock him down near the end of the round and steal the round with the power. And he ended up winning the fight. And, you know, he deserved it. But Figueredo actually, for the most part, outstruck Rob Font on the feet. You know, took him down a, a couple of times. But it's a matter of this is a guy you can take a look and say, Rob Font had more trouble with the power of Cheeto but not with his attack as far as offensively volume wise, like he did with Figueredo. Well, I'm going to throw a little something there. If Umar gets to win, we've already been told he gets the automatic title shot of the winner of Marab and, um, and Sean O'Malley. Yeah. But if Figgy gets the win, he would end up fighting probably the loser of this fight of the title fight to see if he gets next, or he would fight probably Peter Yawn or Corey Sanhagen to see if he gets that. I don't know if they'd match him against Corey because Corey would have lost, but fighting fighting the loser of the title fight would make more sense than fighting the guy who was the number two contender. Well, question, you know, if Umar gets the shot by winning this fight, what does Corey get? I don't know. Maybe um, a spot on the bench because if, if Figgy gets a win, he may jump up and get the shot of the winner of the main event. Man, the winner of the, right sorry, winner of the title fight. That does might that happen. sound right to you? Does that it doesn't sound right. right. It doesn't sound right. Corey's been there for a minute too. This would this would be three three wins if if Figgy gets the win. It's three wins in a row for him in the bantamweight division. Which hey, that that's saying a lot. But Corey Sanhagen's got three wins in a row too. Well, you got to look at it. If he beats Marlon Vera, Marlon Vera just fought for the title. That would give him saying, hey, like I would be pretty much you just this guy just fought for the title. Why wouldn't I get a next title shot after Umar then? Just wait around. Because if, because if Corey beats Umar, yeah, that's true. Corey should get it. <laughs> yeah, possibly. Why. Yeah, that might be possible. That might be possible. Hey, you know what though, John? That's above our pay grade. Let's just go this ahead and true. let that all happen. This next fight. <clears throat> why do we do this to ourselves? Nah, yeah. <laughs> next fight. Tony Ferguson is taking on Michael Chiesa. Uh, this is one of those fights you look and you go, Michael Chiesa, outstanding grappler. Tony, good grappler. Tony's on a seven-fight losing streak, and it's not going to get any better going up against Michael Chiesa. No, he's going up to welterweight. Um, if you look at him, if you look at Tony Ferguson's body, John, he looks sunken in. I know hoping going to, med uh, going to welterweight, but he's not going to put on a ton of muscle in this not time muscle. frame from the last time he fought to now. What? Pictures and stuff that I've seen, like on his Instagram, he still looks really skinny, almost as if he spent his whole time doing cardio and never building any muscle. He looks like skeletorish almost. Like you can tell he's probably in, in phenomenal shape. His body just doesn't have any muscle on anymore because he's gotten older. If you don't lift, if you don't continue to... to 40, he's 40 years of age. I know, John. That's my point. My point is, yeah. when I hit 38, 39, the muscle just didn't stay on. And I was doing workouts. Do I was doing hit workouts. I was doing kettlebell swings. I was, I never lifted weights, but I did all functional movement stuff. Yeah. Rip trainer, TRX, kettlebells, dumbbell, like snatches, cleans, all that. I did all functional movement stuff. And I still had a hard time keeping muscle on. Tony doesn't look like his body doesn't look like he's done any of that. Feel like he's done a lot of actual fight training, which is more bag work, more grappling, more. Th those are things that they don't build muscle. They keep the lean muscle mass on you. He looks extremely skinny. I think physically strong will not be his, his uh, strength in this fight. Michael Chiesa is going to be the bigger, stronger fighter. He can take this fight anywhere. He's going to be, I think he'll struggle a little bit on the feet, a tiny bit. You know, I want to see him with his shirt off. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, like I, I look at that, I'm like, I think that Kiesa is going to be able to keep the, he's going to be, a, he's going to be the physical. And I think he's just, I think he's the better grappler too. He's I, at this point, I think he's the better wrestler. Mm -hmm. He's the better grappler, the better submission fighter. And in the stand up, I think, you know, I think Kiesa's has actually got the speed. Mm, possibly. Yeah, yeah, possibly. So, yeah. And the other thing with Kiesa is that, he doesn't have a lot of miles on him. He hasn't fought in a while. That might work against him, but that also might work to his advantage. He hasn't taken as much damage as, as Tony Ferguson has in the last two years. Look at what was Tony. What was Tony's last fight? Oh, no, uh, what? 
Come on. What was it? Patty Pimlet. Patty Pimlet. But that was Patty, in December Patty 16th, some, 2023. Patty put some big shots on him. Yeah. Patty beat him up in the end. Yeah. He was taking some big shots. And this is the problem, you know, with, you know, you can only accept so much damage throughout your career before it starts to truly affect your ability to perform. This is true. I say it all the time, man. You know, it's like having a, a, a car. You can only run it into the wall so many times before it's a piece of shit and it doesn't work. Yeah. I mean, there's got to come a time. Like, I think, I think, I thought I had heard or read that Dana had said basically this would be it. So I think it's win or lose that I had heard that this would be it. We're going to find out. I'm sure more questions like that will be asked this week. But we're going to find out if this is it. And he'll fight somewhere else probably. Yeah. But it's one of those situations where I've said it about Justin Gaethje a while back when he wasn't fighting as safe and as smart. And then he started changing the way he fought. And I was like, yeah, look, this is, this and is one, look at, and, and if there's one thing that Justin does, Justin takes time off. Hmm. Justin gives himself time to recuperate yeah. from, he knows that he's going into battle and he's going to crash his car, but he's taking it to the shop to get fixed by taking time off, relaxing, not going out and sparring, not going out and doing things that are going to be detrimental. So at least Justin is smart in the way he handles his body and everything in getting it back. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to find out if this ends up being a grappling match or a stand-up match because I feel like Kiesa could take this fight however which way he wants to take it. It's up to Tony to be able to – I mean, think about it. Kiesa's a better grappler than Bobby Green, and Bobby was able to submit, you know, Tony Ferguson. This is – I, it's a, you know, there's that. And then on the feet, Kiesa is not a, a, a world burner on the feet. He's got stand up. He's able to strike, but I think physically he, like I said, he hasn't taken as much damage as Tony has in the last two, three you years. Know, I'm, I'm just going to put it out there. And, you know, and again, I love Tony and I, I, I don't want to see Tony get hurt, but the Tony that fought you is a completely different fighter oh, than the Tony that's going to be stepping into the cage against Michael Chiesa. Absolutely. It's not even the same. It's no. it, I don't I don't even I'm not even talking like that it is. It's it's not. <clears throat> Tony is, you know, he's he's even past where I was when I fought Tony. Oh yeah. <clears throat> he's past that. He's Yeah. So, uh, next fight. <clears throat> next fight Mackenzie Dern taking Lupita Godinez. This is actually an interesting fight. You know, I, I, I love the fact that uh, both of them try to stay active. Mackenzie, obviously, phenomenal ground game. She's had some problems in the stand-up as far as in getting the fight to the ground. She will engage in the stand-up, and, and Lupita Lupi is quick to oblige that. She likes to be in the stand-up. She wants to throw her hands, so she'll be very quick to oblige that. She does have to be careful of the engagement and having Mackenzie get her to the ground. You got to figure her last opponent was Verna. And you know, that's a fight that you know, she actually did well. She kept herself from being submitted and stuff, but Verna was able to take her to the ground. And that was the difference in the fight and why she ended up losing it. So she's got to make sure that she's able to stay on her feet long against Mackenzie Dern. If she wants to get that win. Yeah, I mean, Mackenzie, uh, from what I had, from what I recall, she went down and worked out a little bit with Henry Cejudo. That, I don't know if that got her where she needed to get in terms of wrestling. Can't uh, hurt. Yeah, I don't know if she stayed there. I don't know how long she was there. I just saw videos, I think, of the two of them, you know, going over some techniques. Definitely couldn't hurt her. Um, nope. But that's the one thing that she's needed. Like, she's got the jitsu. There's, oh. there's been no doubt about that. She just needs to work on getting the fight to the ground. If you can't get the fight to the ground, no, your jiu-jitsu is trash. Yeah. So um, everyone that she's lost to is because she struggled getting the fight to the ground. Yeah. And um, exactly so it. that's where I'm at with this. If she can get this fight to the ground, she has a great chance. I would give her probably a 95% chance of winning this fight if she gets to the ground. You know, yep. um, but Lupita is somebody that can knock your head off. And so I don't, I don't, I wouldn't suggest McKenzie try to stand too long and put herself nope. in compromising positions. So Boy, but I, I, I got to be honest, that's a good fight though. That's a good fight. It is. It it's an be interesting fun. fight. Because be if there's one thing about Godinez, she's she's a gamer, man. She's going to come after you. She will throw her hands and she'll go after you. So we're going to see what happens and see how Mackenzie does as far as her Henry Cejudo training. Yeah. I mean, you got to remember, she's got to win, I believe. Mackenzie Dern's got to win over John Deroba. 
Yeah, she does. Yes, yes, she does. She got a win over her. You know, yeah. so I'm mean, like, John Roba is basically next in line for a title shot. Close. So, uh, next fight. What, that's what wins will do for you. <laughs> we got Joel Alvarez taking on a man, the myth, the legend, Elvis Brenner. Hmm. You were just talking about Mr. Brenner earlier and stuff, but this is a, a really good matchup. Joel is that guy, man. Long. You talk about the body type that you like. He's got mm. a ton of range. He's hits like a truck. His stand up is good. Um, this is this is actually a really interesting matchup. I'm 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 interested to see how Elvis Brenner decides to attack Alvarez. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, look, overall, I think it should be a good fight. Um, both of them are going to be pretty scrappy. Both of them are going to make sure that we have some good exchanges. I mean, where do you see this fight going, though, John? Well, if, if you're if you're Alvarez, you, you want to keep it on the feet. You know, use your length, use your range, pick him apart, make him get frustrated. The guys that beat Alvarez, you know, well, mm -hmm. really, there's only been, you know, uh, in the last little Three, bit, there's two. been one, and that was Armin Sarukian. So Sarukian beat him, and, you know, that was, uh, you know, I think second round that he lost to him. I, 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 it was a stoppage. I remember that. But, you know, he's got wins against guys that are uh, good strikers, and he's got submissions against good strikers. So he's got a submission game, but I think he's got, uh, body style-wise, he's got an advantage over Brenner in this. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, looking at, I'm looking at him right now, Alvarez, and here's my thing with him. <clears throat> he gets a win against uh, y Yakovlev or whatever, Alexander Yakovlev in 2020. Then he doesn't fight again until 2021 against Tiago Moises. Then yeah. he doesn't fight he again. Win until there. It does. Yeah, you got to win. You got to win against Tiago. But, but then he doesn't fight again until 2022, and he loses yeah. to Armand Sarukian. Then he doesn't fight again until 2023, and he gets yeah. a win over Mark Dikesi or whatever how you say his name. Yeah, Dikesi. Yeah. So Dikesi. he's only fighting one time a year. Yeah. It's hard to get on a win streak, and I know he's got those wins. He's got the one loss to Armand, which is not a bad win, obviously, we know, because Armand's fighting for the title now. But to see the growth in somebody like him and have the potential that he has, you need to see him be more active than one fight a year. True. If I'm the UFC, got, I'm not trying to get him to fight but, any of my top guys if you're not going to But if you look, active. he's six foot three, Yeah, I want to say. Six foot two, six foot three. So he's got a – for the weight class – I mean, he's got a, a a lot of range, and the guy he's fighting in Brenner likes to be a stand up guy, but Brenner's only about five nine, and so he's going to have a big disadvantage as far as the reach in this, which means he's got to take big chances in coming in. And if there's one thing that we've seen about Alvarez; he's got power in his hands. Yeah, and then I'm looking at Brenner too; like he hasn't fought anywhere near the competition. Nope. <clears throat> so overall. Hey, John, uh, any other fights on the prelims you wanted to chat about? Uh, yeah, I want to say so. Garam, I, lo I love um, Garam Kudalizazi. He is fun to watch. He's a gamer. He's, he's kind of crazy. And he's taking on Jordan Vucinic. And I, I think that's going to be a, a really good fight. Both guys, you know, guys that go after it in the fight. So there should be a finish in this. But it'll be an interesting fight. All right, all right, all right. Well, hey, that's going to wrap up our UFC talk. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. But uh, I feel like George got something to say. What you got for us, buddy? Let's go, George. I just wanted to remind the fans to stay salty. Drink Element. Click the link in your in our description right now. You get a free sample pack with your purchase every single time you purchase from us. Click that link every single time you purchase. You get a free sample pack of all the beautiful, tasty new flavors. Stay salty. It'll help you not crash. Uh, I also just wanted to real quick go over some of the odds from BetUS. They have the odds posted for this main card. So I just Let's go, George. Elvis Brenner is a plus 158. Sounds Joel bad. Alvarez, a minus 188. That sounds pretty correct. Yep. Lupe Gudinez. Gudinez. Gudinez is even money. Mackenzie Dern, a minus 130. Ooh, Interesting. I mean, I can see that. I can yeah. see that. Yeah. <clears throat> this one is not too shocking. Michael Chiesa at a minus 650. Tony Ferguson at a plus oh. 425. Oh, it yeah. kills me. Yeah. It kills me. 
But and we got Davison Figueroa Figuero at a minus. <laughs> can you say that one more time just so I can laugh? Figueroa. Figue 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 got it. Perfect. <laughs> and Davison Figueroa. <laughs> uh, minus 145. We got Marlon Vera at a plus 115. Oh, wow. Got, I mean, look. Uh, <clears throat> Let's 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 go. That's, let's, a, that's a guy coming off of a championship fucking contest in his yeah. last fight, and he's the under underdog. He's the that. underdog. What was the Omar versus Corey Sanhagen? Okay, so right before that, the bullet is at a minus two thirty, and Ooh. the Polish boy is at a plus one ninety. Mm. But then we got main event Umar Nurmagomedov at a minus three oh five. And we have Corey Sandhagen at a plus 230. Damn. 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 Damn is right. Go ahead. Go uh, ahead. Say it. Just say it. I got to say it. Look, he's my boy and I'm a homer. But those, those uh, odds, those odds don't make any sense to me. I would have had this fight. At they're not giving, like they're a, not get, they're not giving Corey enough credit. <clears throat> they're not giving Corey enough credit. Uh, I, I'm not trying to disrespect uh, Corey at all. Like it, it's the, he deserved it. I would have thought this fight would have been more of an even odds. I yeah. would have looked at it as probably, you know, even uh, odds. I can see, look, I can see Umar being the favorite based upon you want to go off of record, but he's also coming off an injury. Okay. So yeah. you take a look and you go, well, he was injured just a while ago. So I'm sure that's, you know, all worked out. But man, Corey Sadhagen gets too good. It's a plus 230. Is that what you said, George? Yep. Damn. Yeah. That's insane to me. Like I would have thought it had been like a a plus, you know, one twenty five, plus one seventy five, somewhere in there. I could have yeah. seen that, but I honestly would have done probably minus one twenty five and maybe, maybe minus one ten. I could have seen it being that even, <clears throat> those odds being that even. Yeah, I mean, and then it doesn't surprise me with the Tony and the Michael Chiesa situation no. either. It doesn't surprise no. me, you know. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Check out those odds at BetUS and uh, hit our link down below. Make sure you guys use that link down below. That link there will give you 125% bonus on your first three deposits when you use our link. Make sure you guys use that link down below. I want to thank you guys for continuing to support us. Hit the subscribe button on our channel also. John, take us away, buddy. Oh, I also want to say thank you to Element for the beautiful shirt that they sent that my wife stole from me. <laughs> Said salty as fuck. And it was... <laughs> It's an awesome shirt. My wife grabbed this. She goes, oh, I like that one. It's a 3X. Yeah. You can't wear that. They right? can just she tie goes, it off in the corner. She goes, That's one. it's like a dress. I'm like, oh, God damn it. Well, you know, <laughs> if, you, if any of you guys have missed, uh, if you guys have met Miss McCarthy, Salty Trouble. AF is. <laughs> fit, it fits very well. She can, yeah, she can be a little fits salty very well. Sometimes. It's like you look and you go, ain't that the damn truth? Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> For everyone uh, out there, thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoy the fights this weekend. Be sure to tune in to a fantastic main event of Corey Sanhagen taking on Umar Nurmagomedov. That is going to be crazy. And you got Dennis Goldsoff against Tim Johnson the night before. Check them all out. That one is from Nashville, Tennessee. And we will see you.